Giro d'Italia stage eight, last one goes up Montarolo. Pickox in the pink jersey, and he's going to go win it and smash everyone today. This is the GC before the stage. Pickock, Colioni, Aliotti, Van der Nabile. Um, and then, yeah, everyone else pretty much irrelevant. Those are the people you've got to keep your eyes on. Uh, Van der Nabile is in the multicolored jersey. So we, there's the Motorola. It's like 11%, very tough. Everyone's in their smallest gear. We're going to do a bit of analysis afterwards. Pickock and uh, Van der Nabile did a, a very, very solid time. You got Conquer up the road. Um, he's just cruising. Um, Filippo Conga, he's you know he's he's not in good good condition for sure. I mean he's in good condition, but he's gonna get spat. Um, when the big boys start properly razzing it from behind, so you have like Pidcock as his one teammate Gloag, who I've been super impressed with. But Lotto is setting the pace. Van Den and Beal must have said to to the boys, there he is, coming up on the left hand side here. Say, I'm on a good day. I'm on a good day. You can see Pidcock's a little further back. Obviously the smallest rider there by quite a long way. And Van Den Abiel decides to uh, to re launch it on this on the Stelvio on the Motorola. Sorry, I'm getting confused on the Motorola. And um, to be honest, like this is the only time I think Pidcock's really looked in danger. Absolutely stunning views on the Motorola. Um, it's about 10k, 11%, I believe. Um, and Pidcock and Van Den Abiel got the 12th fastest time on Strava. Uh, they were like three minutes back on Vincenzo Nibali when he did it in the Giro last year. Um, but yeah, even so, very, very solid performance. Pickup, um, you can see his teammates, Gloag has just gone up with Van den Abiel. Pickup just rode this at tempo. I think he must have looked at the numbers and just said, I know I can do 340 watts for an hour at this point in the race. That's what I'm going to do because he really didn't follow Van den Abiel at all. Conker's still at the front and um, there's a lot of jumping this just because the highlights from Rai aren't great. Um, but yeah. So Gloag's still there, Pickock's just cruising, and you get to see how steep it is around this corner. I mean, these guys are just cooked. I could not imagine doing, like, riding such a such a horrible climb. Uh, and Van den Abiel's setting a good tempo. You can see Colioni, he's got something on, on his right arm, which is always puts him out. Aliotti's been dropped by now. Um, and Colioni, you know, he's looked pretty solid, but he's significantly bigger than Van den Abiel. I mean, look how narrow Van den Abiel's handlebars are. It's absolutely mental. Um, and Pidcock's just cruising with them as well. I mean, this is the, more of a flatter section, probably only 6-7% at this point. But um, it stays pretty, generally, it stays pretty consistent, apart from the hairpins, where it's really, really steep. Um, and, yeah, like there, you can see it suddenly ramps up massively. And uh, obviously the motorbikes are, you know, you can't always see how steep it is, but it is properly, properly harsh. So I think what Pidcock did, which was just to ride to tempo, um, well, not ride tempo, but just, you know, ride to a solid, um, it's on enough point that, you know, he's not going to blow himself up. He knows he's got the jersey in the bag. He just can't let Van der Beel have like four minutes on him. So there's no point blowing up. He's just going to ride um, and see if he can get. There's the more to Marco Pantani. And there's Van der Beel. And we suddenly saw, the highlights suddenly say Van der Beel. And you're like, where's Pidcock? Where's Pidcock? Is he is he up the road? Now Pidcock got spat. And at this moment in time, you're like, that's actually pretty significant. I time that as about a 10, 10, 12 second gap. But Pidcock doesn't panic. Pidcock just gets on on the hoods and just grinds it out to be honest uh, on the top sorry and he's he's out the saddle now but he's just looking at the numbers and just riding um you know full up the climb uh but not blowing himself up as i said before um someone comments the video he looks natural on a bike and i think i think he's been racing since like 10 or 12 or something so it's pretty um he does look class on a bike um so yeah i think it was a good good stage by him uh, it's pretty interesting to see though that he did actually get dropped and van den Abiel, i think must have had some bad luck early on because he's quite far down the gc um, but he seemed really, really strong on this stage. A lot stronger than well, everyone apart from Pidcock. In some respects, maybe he was stronger than Pidcock. But he just rode it, um, no, not as intelligently. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what happened to, for the rest of his team. I assume Lotto are going to sign sign him for next year for the World Tour or year after. Um, this is an, one of the lads they finally catch, um, catch from Colpac, um, and Pidcock's just sitting on at the moment. I mean. Obviously, as I said, it's pretty steep. You're not getting a mega draft, but every little helps. And often mentally, it's quite quite easy when you don't have to think about the pacing. You just sit on someone's wheel and just relax. Um, you don't have to think, oh, I'm going too hard, it's going too easy. You just you just ride on someone's wheel. Um, and Van den Abiel, like you can't even see him. Like he's he looks like he's got a huge gap. But um, I don't know. He must have blown up big time um, because now he's he's behind him and got spat. And it's like, ooh, how did this happen? He had a huge gap, like over 12 second gap. Um, and now he's sort of got us back, but this is one of the flat parts into the steep section around the, around the hairpin. Um, it really looks like a lovely climb. I, if you watch the Giro 2019, it was a really good climb. Roglic got spat on that on that day. Um, 
and good old uh, Julio Ciccone won the stage. It was a descent. I don't think they use it as a sta uh, as a summit finish um, because it's not big enough at the top. But Pickott now sort of, I mean, he doesn't really put an attack. I think he just ride, was riding the same tempo. Um, you know, ran, it looked like, like up this steeper part and it looked, obviously the other lad um, from Colpac couldn't, couldn't continue. Um, and Van der Nabil is just, again, he just looks like now he's just, you know, he's got span. He's like, right, I'm coming back to Pickott now. Um, we're going to go catch him, but it's like, well, what are you doing? I don't really understand, like, okay, I know you need to drop Pickup, but, like, you know, surely you would know that you're on the limit, you know the numbers, I don't know, it, it didn't seem to be a very good uh, strategy by Van der Nabil today, uh, but anyway, I don't know, maybe maybe he felt really good and then didn't eat enough or something like that, I'm not I'm not entirely sure, um, but after this, it, you know, it's a descent, so it's basically just a race to the top. colioni has got dropped drop now by 42 seconds, which is pretty bad, I guess, it's He's still going to get on the podium, but his second position is looking worse and worse the whole time because the time gap between Colioni, um, I mean, Aliotti is completely out of it now. So Van der Nabil's definitely got a podium spot now. He's two minutes down Aliotti. He was in third place before the stage and Colioni was in second. Um, so Van der Nabil was in fourth. So he's definitely got a podium now, but I guess he wants to get second. And I think everyone knows that, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to drop Pickup in this race so far. Um, he's just looked head and shoulders above everyone, and there wasn't even a time trial. Like, Pickock is one of those people, like Remco, who's really, really good on the time trial, even though he's very small. So, you know, he, like, you'd expect, oh, yeah, he, like, he'd lose time on the, on the TT. He wouldn't lose time on the TT. He um, wouldn't necessarily gain, but he came fourth in the in European. So, I mean, it's like in the under-23 category. So, I mean, he's not not bad. Anyway, he goes to the top, uh, gets some get some food, um, get some drinks, um, and they're ready. They sort of know, like... He doesn't have um he doesn't have any pressure uh to drive this pace because you know he's in the leader's jersey you know he, he there's, there's nothing on him so you know he, he can sit on van der Nabil a lot and that's what he does as he's a clever rider um he still works i guess because he wants the stage win but like coming into the last kilometer you can see he just sits on van der Nabil and it's just like you know what mate you want the time on gc i know i'm gonna win it um i guess it's like for him what's the point of not riding like you distance everyone you know it's safer you've got rid of colioni who maybe could come back and attack you it's easier if you ride through but i don't think you know he's, he wasn't riding like absolutely full um on like i mean colioni's now three minutes 48 back so you know that's pretty calm and zoccarato which i think was the guy who was uh riding for uh colpac he's a minute and 10 down so they've got a huge gap 1.2 kilometers to go um, the other thing with Pickock is that he's got a really good sprint. He's actually won the elite. He won the elite uh, Criterium Championships in the UK, which is, I mean, mainly competed by domestic riders, but he won it when he was 17. Um, so he might be like 56, 57 kilos, but he's got a really, really good um, sprint on him as well. Like he's one of those blokes who just, it doesn't make sense physiologically. He can sprint, he can time trial, and he can climb. You're like, what? How does this add up? And that's why I think he's he's got, um, he's going to be a danger in the future because, you know, he could... I like I was talking to my mate like what race could he do I mean he's one under 23 Paris Bay um he's won baby Giro he's junior time trial champ he's uh, you know second in elite cyclocross world champs I mean it's like no one knows what he's going to be like um I mean Van Aert is like <laughs> he's like Van Aert but even smaller so he, I think he'll be able to climb um definitely with the top GC guys but maybe also he wants to do the spring classics I don't know um but yeah Van der Nabil gets mugged off here I mean it's just like you are going to get being like even if they worked equally Pickock's going to be in a sprint Pickock mainly lent on him so game over cheers thanks for coming um it's pretty much how this sprint ends up coming it's a slight uphill drag which i guess suits the lighter rider even more um which is Pickock. the other guy you know he looks like a classic um gc guy van den Abiel, like you know slightly taller i, I don't think he is i think he probably is only like 60 61 kilos it's just Pickock so small that it makes him look you know more like a 70 kilo rider but i don't think he is um van den Abiel. Um, but yeah, this is come up towards the finale in the barrier sections. Um, there's not much tactics going on here. It's sit on and then gas it in the sprint. We're going to get the heads up shot when this motorbike pulls in just on the left here. 150 meters to go, as you saw on the on the barriers. Pickup now gets in the in the drops and just says, uh, yeah, cheerio lad, I'm going for the stage win. And <laughs> Van der Nabil is like, yeah, fair enough, mate. No worries. And Pickup's like, right, three stages in a row, overall win won like every jersey i think here we go so he won the like that's him winning the overall obviously on the stage so that's the stage podium gets his little elbow flick um so stage win then we go over then he's got the gc win then he's got the points jersey is is i'll leave them all in but he, he won everything 
Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, we'll go over to the power video, power part in a minute um, and see what sort of numbers these boys were doing up the Motorola. Tell me, can you see the stars? We're just running forward in the dark. Can you just want my soul needed? Two hearts we share the same beating. Is this what it